Hi there, summertime in the UK is bat-tastic. This is the time of year when all of our bat species are at their busiest because during the winter months they all hibernate. Right now many of the female species have just given birth to a single pup and then as the summer progresses those pups will mature and then in late summer, early autumn, they'll be mating again. They go to different roosts. Now bats in the UK have really suffered along with many other uh, species of creature but bats generally have suffered enormously due to habitat loss both from the point of view of where they roost and also from the point of view of their foodstuffs. They are all insectivorous species here in the UK, they eat bugs and therefore if bugs are on a low ebb bats are suffering too. You can make a massive difference in your own home patch by providing for your local bats. First of all in the form of places to find refuge and bat boxes come in many forms. Here's one. It's a relatively simple single chamber design. Uh, you can see there's a wee ladder that they land on, then they clamber up inside and there's a single cavity inside. Now that larger cavity means that it can accommodate a number of different species. Uh, Pipistrel, which is a smallest, perhaps most common bat, but also others like uh, potentially serotine, noctule, lacelers, all of those could potentially use a box like this. Um, you want to position these boxes on anything, a tree, absolutely, uh, or indeed a wall, fairly warm. They don't, they don't like to be chilly bats. And so you can put it, I, I would personally, if I have, you know, if we're talking about putting it on your house, I'd put it about two meters or higher up on the wall, ideally um, south facing, something like that, so that it stays nice and, nice and toasty if there is any sunshine. <laughs> that's a joke, isn't it? Um, but you can put other types of box up and that's really a good idea to provide lots of different types of habitat for the bats in your neighborhood. So we've got the larger single chamber type. Then we've got ones like this, which are um, they're narrower chambers. You can see that there's kind of like little slots and that's ideal for species like pipistrel. Little pipistrel bats squeeze up into here and you can get 15, 20 or more bats in a single slot like that. So you might have 40, 50 bats using a single box like this. Now it's worth pointing out that all bats are protected by law uh, and so you need a license to inspect or handle a nest box. But you can tell if a box is being occupied just by looking underneath and seeing if there's any little bat droppings on the floor underneath. So it's worth checking from time to time. Sometimes you even see a little bat dropping hanging on to one of the ladders like that. So you'll just go, oh, someone's in there. Or you just watch at dusk, don't you? And you just have a look and you see them coming out. Or you could even get a bat detector. There's little devices that you can use. It's really good fun and that helps you identify the species because it translates the ultrasonic sounds of a bat call, which we can't hear with the human ear, into little clicks and you can hear tick, 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 on the bat detector. Anyway, that's the, uh, that's the narrow slot chamber type. And um, a few years ago, I designed this simple structure, which I call the bat ladder and along with Wildlife World, we, we developed this specifically for free hanging bats, species like lesser horseshoe, greater horseshoe, uh, long-eared bat from time to time, and others. The reason being that you don't stick it on the wall like this. This is to designed very specifically to go into roof spaces between beams. And it means that the bats, by day or night, have somewhere good to hang on to. And I put one of these, when I first designed these, I put one of these up in a porch where I knew lesser horseshoe bats were struggling to find a toehold. I was getting one or two visiting. Put this up, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten bats were using this single panel. So you can imagine if you put five or six panels up in the roof space, you really are providing for your local furry flying neighbors. Um, bats in this country, all of them, are insectivorous. They feed on bugs, flying bugs mostly, but they'll also glean. Long-eared long bats hover in front of leaves and they just pick moths and bugs off the leaves sometimes. You can actually see them doing it if you've got a good moonlit night. That means you're going to need bugs in the neighbourhood too. Well, we, do, we all know that insects have suffered in the UK in recent years for lots of reasons, but again, it's habitat loss and it's loss, loss, loss of food. So encouraging flowers into your garden that cater for night flying insects is a great idea. So there are moths around to feed your local bats. They're magnificent creatures. They need our help and support and anything you can do to give them that is well worthwhile.